7 News. Tonight, a wife's plea. I hope that their guilt eats away at them, like my grief eats away at me. The mystery phone call that could help catch a Perth killer. Perth Wild Party's new laws to crack down on parents. A bike warning, a boy almost impaled on his handlebars. I couldn't breathe. And will Josh Kennedy line up for round one? We'll ask John Warsfold live and exclusive. From the studios of Seven Perth, Rick Arden and Susanna Carr. Good evening. We begin tonight with a plea from the wife of missing father of two, David Blenkinsop. The 32-year-old vanished in Wanneroo three weeks ago. Detectives believe Mr Blenkinsop was murdered and say a mystery caller to Crime Stoppers could hold the key to catching his killer. Diana Blenkinsop wears her missing husband's wedding ring around her neck. The 30-year-old tradesman gave it to her for safekeeping, worried it would cause him an injury at work. Today, a message for anyone involved in David Blenkinsop's disappearance. I hope that their guilt eats away at them, like my grief eats away at me. And I hope that they lie awake at night thinking about what they've done, because I have to lie awake at night listening to our boys call for their daddy. Police suspect David Blenkinsop has been murdered. He went missing in Taywood Drive, Wanneroo, just up from the house he shared with his wife and two sons. A neighbour has told police a person fitting the description was bundled into a car by two men. Mr Blenkinsop's blood was found in the street. It's hard on his family. We're in pieces. Struggling to cope. How do you cope with this? It's, it's not knowing that's the worst thing. Last week, police were given information that sent them scouring Lake Joondalup. They've had more tips to Crime Stoppers, one in particular nominating another area to search. The information ties in with, with other information we've received during the course of the inquiry, so that's why we think it's highly relevant and we're, we're very, very keen for this person to come forward. Friends of the Blenkinsops have set up a Facebook page and a bank account to help raise money for Diana and her sons. Jeff Parrott, Seven News. The police commissioner wants party hosts to face criminal charges if they allow alcohol to be served to minors. It's one of several ideas being considered by the state government after another weekend of party violence. Grant Taylor reports. After another weekend of party violence, the police commissioner has party organisers in his sights. Carlo Callahan wants party hosts to face criminal charges if they serve alcohol to juveniles without parental consent. It is an issue when kids go to a house and there's a, a party on that they access alcohol at those houses, either supplied by the host or parents or somebody. What we want to do is make that illegal. Police attended 10 wild parties on Saturday night. Many involved large groups of drunken teenagers. At one event in Balga, a 16-year-old girl was arrested after she allegedly knocked a policeman unconscious. The Commissioner also wants unlawful assembly laws to be simplified. He says they're convoluted and police need more power to disperse crowds quickly when parties get out of control. The Commissioner says he's also open to the idea of a party register. Hosts would have to inform police in advance of the time, date and location. And depending on the number of guests, they could also be required to provide private security. The Police Minister says he's considering the proposals. What are these people's parents doing? Um, you know, are they inept in their upbringing of their children that they allow their children to go out, young teenagers going out under the influence of alcohol? Some people who are engaged in these things, 17-year-olds, will be 21 uh, by the time Mr Johnson gets around to doing anything about the issue. And Grant Taylor joins us live from Royal Perth Hospital, where a 17-year-old boy is in an induced coma. Grant, he was seriously injured in a wild party on the weekend in Seville Grove. Ooh, Rick, 17-year-old uh, Ashley Williams was hit in the head with a brick during a clash involving about 50 youths on Saturday night. That attack uh, has left Ashley with a fractured skull and doctors here at Royal Perth have had him in an induced coma ever since. Now, the house where the party was being held was also pelted with missiles. Several windows were smashed and there was uh, a large amount of other damage. Police haven't charged anyone yet over the attack on Ashley and they're, earning, they're urging anyone uh, who was there and those who was involved to call Crime Stoppers. Sue. Thanks, Grant. A 10-year-old boy is in hospital after he was almost impaled on his bike's handlebars. Matthew Jankowskis who fell off his bike, a gift for his birthday. The Department of Consumer Protection will investigate his parents' claims the new tyres didn't have enough grip.
I landed on my handlebars and I was like in so much pain. Matthew Jankowskis should be celebrating his 10th birthday. Instead, he's injured in Princess Margaret. Matthew has been riding his new BMX bike for the first time, a birthday present from his parents, and he came off on gravel. His chest landed on the handlebars. A big, huge lump formed that we thought was his lungs because it was um, breathing with him as well, like it was pulsating. Matthew has flown from Northern to PMH by the Royal Flying Doctor. Doctors told Matthew's parents blood had entered his lungs. I was like in so much pain. I couldn't breathe. Matthew suffered internal injuries. His parents are waiting on scans to see if there's any damage to his lungs. But at this stage, doctors say he's recovering well and should be home tomorrow. Matthew's parents blame the tyres that were fitted to the BMX. They want other parents to be aware. Normally, you know, your tyres have all lo lots of ripples on the actual tread. Well, these were quite smooth and I was just thinking that that's obviously the new way that they do BMX bikes now. Consumer Protection says it will contact Matthew's parents about the BMX. Alexis Donkin, 7 News. A Brentwood man seriously assaulted while walking home says his attackers laughed as they stabbed him. Police suspect the teenagers were trying to rob the factory worker. Sally Bowery reports. Jay Jin Joe thinks whoever did this to him did it for fun. The blade went all the way through his right arm. So they laughed at you as they attacked you? Yeah. When they stabbed you, they were laughing? Yeah, just, just fun. The 21-year-old was allegedly chased down, assaulted and stabbed in Brentwood last night. Jay Jin says his attackers were teenagers. They didn't threaten him or steal anything. They don't want my wallet and they don't want anything. The attack happened at 8.30 metres from Jay Jin's home. Police believe the motive was robbery. Jay Jin was found by neighbours bleeding on Bateman Road. It's coming up to where we are. We sort of collapsed in front of us. So, and this blood here. Is yeah, this blood. is where this is where he was on the floor, like he was on the floor, like holding his arm. And Jay Jin moved to Perth from Korea for work last month. The three teenagers still haven't been caught. Jay Jin says the attack will haunt him, but he wants to stay in Australia. <sighs> it's hard for you to talk about. Yeah. It's a, probably a lot to take in, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Sally Bowery, Seven News. A jury will soon consider its verdict in the case of an 82-year-old man on trial for murder. Ronald Pennington is accused of killing Harriet Anderson Slater in Woodlands almost 20 years ago. Henry Kabansky reports. After five days of evidence, a jury will soon decide whether Ronald Pennington is a killer or an innocent man. The 82-year-old is on trial for a murder that's alleged to have happened almost 20 years ago. Ronald Pennington is accused of killing 41-year-old Harriad Anderson Slater, a married woman he'd known just a few weeks before she disappeared. That was July 1992. Her body wasn't found until last year. Prosecutors say the circumstances of this case all point to Ronald Pennington. Harriad was last seen alive outside Pennington's front door. He doesn't deny being home the night she showed up, and Harriad's bones were found in the backyard of Pennington's former home some 20 years later. The court heard Pennington was an alcoholic with an eye for the ladies. But Mr Pennington's lawyer says it was Harriad's husband, David Slater, who had the motive and opportunity to kill her. And there's no direct evidence that links Ronald Pennington to her death. David Slater has denied killing his wife. Emmy Kabansky, 7 News.